Hi everyone, Stepan here. It's Wednesday, so we are going to continue the series on Jose Raul Capablanca. Uh, today we are going to cover an absolutely insane attacking game in which he played Enrique Del Monte, who is an unknown player. The only other two games I could find was another match, another game from the same match in 1901 against Capablanca, and a simul he played against Lasker in which he got crushed. Uh, so, I don't know how strong he was. Uh, Jose Raul Capablanca was 13 at the time of this game. He was born in 1888. And this was an attacking masterpiece. It was a Smith Mora gambit. So, e4 played by Capablanca. He had the white pieces. Black plays c5, and we have d4. And now, usually, today, after c takes uh, d4, People play c3, and the main line goes dc3, uh, knight c3, and it's a very aggressive opening in which black has a pawn, but white has more than enough compensation for the pawn because of his quick development. This is just one of the main lines, and you can see that black is lagging in development, and that white's pressure in the position is extremely annoying, so these positions are very hard to defend. So a good opening choice for a 13-year-old who got known for his end games and solid play, but it, this was this was something else. He played knight f3, which is still playable. And now the move knight f3 gives black the option to transpose back into normal Sicilians. So if he plays d6, we are now in the main line open Sicilian. So for example, knight f6, knight c3, a6 would be the knight of, g6 would be the dragon, etc. Also, after knight f3, black is able to play the move knight c6, transposing to the, to the queen takes d4 Sicilians. And also he could play e6, transposing into French Sicilians, so after knight takes d4, something like a6, etc, etc. However, uh, Mr. Uh, Del Monte played the move e5, which isn't a mistake in itself, it's playable, it has been played on the high level about 30 times uh, in Grandmaster games, so it's a move, but it's not, not the best move. Capablanca plays c3, an excellent move, and this is the first instructive point I would like to mention, when your opponent has a strong center, when your opponent has central control and an advanced pawn in your position, which is only defended by one pawn on an, on an adjacent file, you have to undermine that. So c3 is a great positional move. Another thing it does strategically, it gives the knight the c3 square in the case of, of black taking the pawn. Now black doesn't really have much choice. If he doesn't take, he could likely lose a pawn. However, black defends for the moment with knight c6 and now we have cd4. And black plays bishop b4 check, a tempo move, which helps white develop as well. So both bishops get developed, so nothing much is going on. And here black makes the crucial mistake after which his game is hopeless. So if you remember a move ago after before c3 and after c3, black had this central bind on the position. After queen to d2, white is threatening to, to get a strong bind on the position. So this is the second instructive point. If your opponent has two connected pawns in the center, and one of them is free to advance, gaining space, then you don't allow that. So black had to take. Okay, Black had to take. Either take the bishop, take the pawn, just get rid of this central pawn mess, and preferably make the e4 pawn weak. So he could have played bishop d2, queen d2, knight f6, stuff like that. Instead of that, he played queen e7. And now, hopefully, you can find the correct continuation. Of course, you, you play the move d5. And in this position, black is just... Black's position is just horrible. So wherever the knight goes, his position is bad. If the knight goes to d4, then knight takes d4, e takes d4, and you simply snap the bishop off. Interpose with your queen. Once the queens get traded off, you take with the king and you round up this pawn. It's not hard to do that. Uh, okay, so this is a mini plan which you can hopefully find. Uh, pause the video, find a way to win the pawn uh, in, in two moves. Okay, there are two ways. So the first way, of course, is king d3. Uh, that would be a mistake because you are blocking in your bishop. Uh, a better option is, of course, knight a3, knight c2, and you just snap off the pawn. So that would happen in case of knight d4. His opponent played knight d8, and th this is even worse. This knight is never getting out. Okay, bishop d3, sensible development, bishop d2, knight bd2. 
d6 played opening up the bishop but this is just dreadful now you can see how important and how str strong it is to have a pawn in the middle of your opponent's position rook c1 played fine a6 okay he had to do something about this diagonal it's already getting very very hard to defend and now i would like to invite you to find an attacking plan and to choose your targets find two targets you can aim for in the black position so pause the video and find two mini plans uh, and each plan should involve attacking one weakness okay so your first thought probably should be attacking the king because you have this light square diagonal uh, and you have pressure on the c file so ideas with rook c7 bishop b5 queen a4 come to mind the second plan is of course attacking the d6 weakness which is really hard to defend so plans like knight c4 okay in the game capablanca played knight c4 putting pressure on d6 more importantly combining the two plans together and this is i i hope you manage to find this wholesome idea of putting pressure on the diagonal and d6 at the same time and going for knight b6 with knight b6 d7 is terminally weak Okay, bishop d7 played, knight b6. Now, of course, you don't really want to give up your bishop, but you have no other choice because your rook is attacked. So rook b8, what can you do? And now queen c2. There were other, other ways to continue the position, but c7 is an extremely weak point. Black saves the bishop with bishop g4. And now this is basically uh, white to play and win. Okay, so... You know that the diagonal is, is the biggest weakness, you know that the king is weak. If black could castle, he may yet live to see another 5 or 10 moves. But with this diagonal so terminally weak, it's game over after the next move. Find a way to weaken the diagonal. Okay, so hopefully uh, you managed to find the move h3. Now, this bishop has no squares. Okay, there, there is no way to save the bishop. The bishop will have to either give itself up or go back, uh, in which case it would be it would be captured. Okay, so black takes, bishop takes f3, and now of course you don't recapture, you just win on the spot. Queen a4 check, and the king only has the f8 square. If you block with the queen, I take your queen, the bishop is not coming back anymore, so that's basically it. So black, in case king f8, then simply knight d7 check, king e8 and knight takes rook and that's game over. Check again here and now you grab the bishop. You could also pick up some more material before that, by the way, you could do this. And just check again and do a seesaw and just pick up another pawn and then, and then take. That would actually be the most precise way to play. So after queen a4, black played knight c6, we have d6, threatening a fatal check with c7 check, winning the rook with check. So queen c7 blocking that, but now cb7 check anyway, king to f8 and simply rook takes queen. I mean, this is an attacking masterpiece. His opponent helped him, fine, but this is such a precise game. He, he made absolutely no mistakes. Uh, the engine would have played slightly more precise moves, maybe, but then it would have strayed from the attacking plan human a human could find, which is a weak diagonal pawn on d6. His opponent, of course, resigned here. 18 moves of complete chaos. I mean, I'm so happy that I'm going through Capablanca's games. I can't wait to, to get to his games uh, against actually good opponents. For now, we are going to be covering this match series played in 1901, where he played games against, well, mostly weaker players than him. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, we are continuing the Capablanca story next Wednesday. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.